Aloha. Welcome to the Mr. G podcast. This is episode like 48 or 49 part two because we're doing two today. There's this shitty fucking kid on the second floor who's been obsessed with me, harassing me for four and a half years. He's not even allowed to live in these apartments. His parents have a one bedroom apartment here. And I don't know if there's like an internet switch or a way to shut somebody's internet off. But when it seems like whenever he comes or, or leaves, the internet just goes off for like five minutes. Like he like does something like there's like a switch for the building or something like that. But I swear, and uh, the police actually suggested that I get a restraining order over this person. But I hope everybody out there is doing well. <laughs> I have some crazy psycho kid on the second floor. He doesn't even sleep here. He just comes here every single day and like stands in front of my security camera. He's like made like threatening uh you know things in front of my cameras it's just like bro you know menacing is a felony like i have a, a tape of him just being like a psycho on on my camera i could have him arrested anytime but he needs to like it's so pathetic but uh we're going to talk a little bit more about indiana jones if you look at part one i was talking about how indiana jones had it accurate with the dial of destiny as far as uh, the siege of Syracuse, which was a famous battle that happened in 212 BC. So spoiler alert, at the end of Indiana Jones part five, uh, they use the dial of destiny and they're trying to, the, he's like fighting the Nazis and there's like this Nazi bad guy and he's trying to go back to 1939, but instead uh, they don't take into account continental drift. And so at the end of the movie, Indiana Jones is like continental drift. You know, Archimedes didn't know about continental drift. And Archimedes is a famous mathematician uh, who took part in the famous battle of the Siege of Syracuse. And he actually was an inventor as well, Archimedes. And Archimedes had all these inventions that were used uh, to protect the island of Sicily uh, during the Battle of Syracuse. So that's a historic battle. And when Indiana Jones, there's always a scene in every Indiana Jones movie because he's a professor, he's a teacher. There's always a scene of him uh, teaching students. So this movie was like the rest of the Indiana Jones movies. And what he's talking about in this movie during the teaching scene is he's talking about uh, Archimedes and the siege of Syracuse and the dial of destiny. But the one difference between this teaching scene and the other teaching scenes from earlier movies is earlier movies like Raiders of the Lost Ark and Temple of Doom. When you see Indiana Jones teaching as a college professor, all the students are very attentive. Uh, he has a lot of female students and they're all listening to what he's saying. All eyes are on him. And uh, the difference now is they make Indiana Jones like this teacher that nobody's listening to. And Indiana Jones is like all passive. He's like, did you guys read the assignment? Anybody? Did anybody read the assignment? It's on the test. And that was kind of lame that they did that to him. And there, the, there was a few lame instances of the movie where they added unnecessary characters and they had like a certain dialogue that was like not just cheesy, but it was just like added like for certain framing reasons. And it's like they had to meet the requirement. Like they had like this like 1970s, like black power girl. And like her storyline was kind of confusing. Like whose side was she on? Was she a Nazi sympathizer or something? And then they had uh, uh, in Tangier, they had uh, the lead female leads ex-husband or ex-boyfriend all of a sudden like jumps into the car chase. And the car chase was cool. There was like a three-wheeler car. It reminded me of uh, some of the uh, electric three-wheelers they have out now that are really popular. Shout out Asimoto, I think it's called. <laughs> but uh, Archimoto, Archimoto. But um, but yeah, um, Archimedes was a real person and... The ending of Indiana Jones, like I said, they go back to the year 200 BC, but then they all of a sudden ended like kind of like cheaply where he's like, I'm staying here. And he like gets shot. And supposedly I, from what I read, that's how the movie ends in a lot of theaters. I must have saw an alternate version, but Indiana Jones uh, gets shot and dies in 212 BC. Uh, I think that's the, the the version in the theaters, but the version that I saw the female lady's like, no, you're coming back with me. And then punches him and then he wakes up and he's in a different reality where he's married to Marion, who is like an older woman. And he's like an older man and they're like a senior citizen couple in New York City. And it's a real sad way to see Indiana Jones, you know? 
Indiana Jones need to be, needs to be riding in convertibles, banging bitches half his age. You know, that's what Indiana Jones needs to be doing. That's what we want to see. All right. You can still have the whip. Uh, but Indy, come on, you know, you don't want to like retire in New York City and and nobody's going to watch a spinoff of that new character. And like I said in the earlier podcast, watching the new girl jump on moving planes from a motorcycle or jump on moving cars. That was like too far fetched. It's like, whoa, 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 Indiana Jones is supposed to be doing that. And he's just like the, a background like character and uh, at times and what in the action sequences so that's where they got it wrong. And uh, but overall, uh, you know, if you like Indiana Jones for the history and the archaeology and the fighting the Nazis, then it was good. And, uh, you know, I enjoyed it on, on a scale from one to ten. I give it seven out of ten. But but yeah, Archimedes was a actual person. And um, it's good that it came out on Fourth of July weekend. I kind of went off about uh, my neighbor out there, but he's not even my neighbor. He's my neighbor's kid. Like he does, he's not even allowed here. Terry just comes here every single day. I guess he's homeless and lives in his car. But uh, the thing is about a car, I remember one fourth of July. It was like 1996 when I was like 15 years old. And um, I was hanging out with my brother and our friend Benny was throwing a party. But for whatever reason, my brother Michael wasn't allowed there and I was allowed there and could have went to Benny's party. But Michael was like, no, just hang out with me. And so we we're both 15 years old. He's my twin brother. And so we go to like some like playground area and like we smoke a little weed or whatever. And we're just hanging out there and like the fireworks start. And uh, I'm just hanging out with him. And, him and, I, and I was thinking like, that's the right thing to do, but it was, it was selfish of him not letting me go to the party, but I'm sitting there with him and he's just like, talking about himself and he's like oh if, if once i get a car things will be different all, all i need is th that car and, and he was just talking about it over and over and and i was trying to explain to him what, what like like well benny's party's right there you know even if you had a car you know things wouldn't be that different but uh some people they just obsess about that they think and maybe it has to do with the commercials brainwashing people to thinking that's the most important thing but you see a lot of young uh impoverished people men that like lease cars every month, like my brother, stupidly. And back then, you know, a young person in 18, 19, 20, you don't have good credit. So you're going to be paying monstrous amount of interest and fees and insurance and all for what? Just to look cool, but you don't really look cool. Uh, a famous expression is the only people that buy new cars are really rich people and really poor people. And so, uh, I see particular people that grew up here and they grew up in really dismal circumstances and sh not even having their own bedroom, not even like having their own space and not knowing boundary concepts of boundaries where they yell in my fucking window or think that I'm competing with them or something. But, but th I see them, they, they lease this car and they think that's just going to change everything. And like, that's just going to give them so much freedom and, and so much uh, uh, everything. And, and it's kind of sad because, and, and it changes their personality and, and it does improve confidence in people, I suppose, but it's the wrong kind of confidence. And that's why you see so many people having road rage incidents, a completely normal person that would never get upset or lose their cool that you put them behind a 2000 pound automobile and that somebody, uh, uh, you know, upset peeves them off. And they're they're like a fucking madman, like willing to go to any extreme to fucking uh, a stranger, you know, like even if it's like a little guy, big guy, you cut me off. I will fight you. I will. It's like I will roll around and sweat and get in prison for you, for you, stranger, stranger that I don't know. It's like, what the fuck? Like you know like who who when you think logically which they're not doing at that time uh but but you put somebody behind a 2000 pound automobile and you know some people usually always men they uh they just become empowered maybe it's like small penis syndrome or something but but like i said my twin brother he doesn't have a small penis from what i hear all right i don't, I don't look at my twin brother's penis but there has been times you know Look, I'm I'm not a big fan of penises at all. Anytime I've seen penises, it's been like a traumatic experience. You know, it's been like in county jail or like boot camp or something. 
and and penises they look like aliens they're like one-eyed creatures they're like <laughs> Like every time I see a penis, like ah, what the fuck is that? What the hell is that one-eyed motherfucker? Oh, it's a penis. It's I got one too. Yeah, <laughs> but mine is like nice and tan and thick. My, my, I have, have a, I actually have a very attractive looking penis. You know, so my penis is like the Brad Pitt of penises. You know, but uh, but yeah, what? Why are we talking about penises? How did we get from Indiana Jones to penises? I don't know. Oh, okay, yeah, people that uh, lease cars. Like I said, the only people that get lease that lease cars even are really rich people or really poor people and i see some really poor people that live around here that grew up here and that think that having a car is going to change everything and you could tell how their confidence just changes where they talk so much shit and they're willing to like move their car and like speed out and like it's like whoa you watch too much tv like you actually look ridiculous like you know you're 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 I, you know i saw one of the kids his mom was like walking to work at like 4 a.m in this neighborhood and i'm like what like i don't even walk around at 4 a.m in this neighborhood and you have a car and your your mom's walking to work i remember once uh, when uh my mom i would never let my mom walk to work out if i had a car i would give her a ride the one time my mom was in a bad neighborhood in the summer of 2003 and uh, near at the warren inn I remember me and my twin brother joking about how our mom, she was having mental problems at the time, but she was like our kids. Like we weren't going to let her walk around the neighborhood alone. We had to like walk with her like for safety measures. And so like how, how well are you doing? You're, you, you know, if you're not allowed to even sleep here, you come here every day, you harass the single white man just living here by himself doing his own thing. Like it's, it's pretty scary that like the, the, uh, the, the, uh, nature and nurture the nurture of somebody growing up in that environment is is kind of sad you know like what are you gonna have friends over here this is where you spent every christmas every birthday and this is like dirty parking lot trash filled industrial area this is your neighborhood you know I, I heard them lighting off fireworks on the fourth of july it's like hey uh alamoana park is like two miles that way you know like uh capiolani park they got big fireworks shows you know you're not like hiding in an industrial area apartment and not even hiding like hiding where they don't tell anybody their names <laughs> or their age like i've lived here four and a half almost five years and the majority of people are afraid to tell me their names from day one and that includes their kid why why are they afraid of saying their names are they what here illegally or something you know my name is gregory brandt you know i'm not hiding anything but but yeah so um the Indiana Jones movie on a scale from nine to 10, like I said, probably a 7.5. So this is part two of today's podcast. And this is coming to you from the outskirts of Chinatown, where it's probably about 80 degrees right now. Uh, the Mr. G podcast, it's available wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple podcasts, Amazon podcasts, Google podcasts, and full episodes of the Mr. G podcast are uploaded in their entirety to uh, Twitter youtube and spotify you can follow me on spotify too i'm not going anywhere new episodes every day uh, i hope all of you have a wonderful day and i hope you liked my little uh my little dick jokes I actually i i got a, i got some big dick jokes too but uh i hope you guys liked uh practicing my act my comedy act on that all right, everybody have a great day. Check out my uh, TikTok videos of me feeding the street kitties and me and the street kitties. We bid you mahalo and aloha. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, you know who? Mr. K. Aloha.